Mr. Lucas, do you want to do the intro today? Yeah, my hair is a little bit, you know, I need to... Wait, where's makeup? Where's makeup? You know? Maybe if you got out of bed at the right time. I need a wig. <laughs> Donna, I wanted, you know, the, the one with the curls, like the uh, judge. Judge Lucas. Previously on Sailing Ruby Rose. So after the relative insanity of the last three days, looks like the last few hours is going to be none of what I signed up for. Yeah, finally at the Chang. Leg one finished. We have a two day downwind sail, which hopefully will be more enjoyable than the sail up here, which you should have already seen, which was quite frankly, miserable. I'm hot bunking with Lucas. And he's left the mattress nice and warm. So yeah, 130 degrees, eight and a half to nine knots, and 20 to 22 knots of breeze. Oh, here we are sailing. We just passed the beautiful island of Kugui. We have something like a hundred miles to Hong Kong, so we just came arrived in Hong Kong pretty much during the night. Drop anchor and then up the side on over tomorrow morning. Yes. Yeah. Sweet. We have a really nice current going. Uh, high tide is or unknown tomorrow, so it's good for us to go up the river. Right up at lunchtime. Huh? Right up, leave at eight. Tied right up at lunchtime. Yeah, pretty much earlier and then arrive there early. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Beautiful day, something like 20 knots Yeah. the tail. That they say. What, what, what was the phrase yesterday? From uh, fair winds and... Uh, fair winds and following seas. Well, we have fair winds, a little bit over fairly. Uh -huh. Following seas, yes we do. There you go. There you go. Yeah, fair winds of the sail. Yeah, it's a, it's a really lovely downwind sail, as you can tell. Crew morale is pretty high. Richard, the CEO of Seawind, Phil, delivery skipper, uh, just having a, a, a conflap, and us cabin boys are uh, just being cabin boys. All right, back later. Welcome back to us at sea. Uh, it is about, ooh, what did I say, quarter to six? In about 15 minutes, I start my, uh, my first evening watch. Uh, six to nine, we've got about 60 miles to run. That essentially means that we'll be at the mouth of the Saigon River for the morning and then a trip straight back into the factory. So yeah, we're making a really, really good time. Seas are building a little bit, about 22, 24 knots of wind. Still running at about 140, 150 apparent, making between seven and 10 knots at the moment. Still got the reef in. And we'll keep the reef there because it's evening. Not from that, yeah. Very pleasant to be at sea. Finally, you know, at the end of the trip, got my sea legs. I'll watch sunset, watch the stars come out. Beautiful evening at sea. There's a lot of fishing boats out now. And I say this a lot on the internet for those of you who think that, um, you know, they're slightly concerned when they're starting to sail about sailing at night. It's actually easier to sail at night because it's easier to see boats at night than it is during the day. And these are guys all trawl in pairs so you have to kind of like look make sure that you're not going between them and uh, the fleet comes out at a certain time and they just all zip past us yeah i'll let you get on with it show you some shots of the sunset and then go with my night watch Not sure if you're going to pick this up. It's uh, about three o'clock in the morning. We are just passing the seaside town of Bung Tao on the way back into the Saigon River, which means our trip is almost done. And in the distance, I can see Saigon. But the, uh, there, are, there is a whole heap of shipping traffic here. I dodged a ferry back there. As I carry, I mean a bloody red cargo ship. Another one just came in front of us, 320 meters long. And uh, it's very difficult to see light signals because there's so much light pollution from Bung Tao. So there's three of us on one. We'll be putting this camera down very, very, very shortly. But yeah, it's um, a bit full to the moment. So um, everyone's tired. Just in the distance, it's really nice to see Saigon. Nice to be back. 
So yeah, we have uh, probably about two and a half hours till daybreak. So we're going to just hover just outside the shipping channel, very uh, gingerly. So, red traffic marker, hang on Richard. Yeah, nah, nah, yeah. Anyway, beautiful sunrise for yeah, the camera, that, everybody. Sure oh, yeah. Uh, after 90 minutes of restful sleep. Look at this Argentinian, he's only 70. <laughs> <laughs> he's only 70 but looks 35. Just blending your coffee. Yeah, that's right. Half a one. That's good. Cafe Negro. Thank you, sir. That's lovely. A little cappuccino action. Cappuccino. That's all it is. Oh, We've got about three hours up the river. Oh, look at that sunrise. That's a classic, classic Asian sunrise. A classic sunrise. sunrise. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. 90 minutes later. Actually, probably I've had, we have had less sleep than you've had if you took a break in this video to have dinner. It's been pretty, I mean, look at Lucas's eyes. They look like he used no. to look after smoking half of like uh, Ho Chi Minh City, but now that he's puritanical, his eyes are back to being very, very normal. <laughs> anyway we are yeah we anchored um had 90 minutes sleep which is why we all look so beautiful and um young and now we're gonna head up ho chi minh river the saigon river saigon river saigon river and yeah two or three hours time we should hopefully without interference some police lobster pots crab pots fishermen fishing lines tied up in the middle of the bloody fairway that we didn't see until the last minute. We should be back in the Saigon shipyard relatively shortly. So yeah, I guess we're at the end of our trip as we kind of whiz back into the Mekong Delta. <laughs> it's been a trip of clearly two distinct legs. Upwind the hammering. and downwind. Very pleasant. I think we averaged 8.1 knots yesterday, which is good for this swell on the sea stay. But now, with about an hour or so to, to run until we tie up and then get the boat back to the factory, now comes a time when Sea Wind will take this boat, have a look at it. Richard, the CEO, has been sat making notes for two days as to things that he wants to improve, tweak, change, make sure it runs slightly more appropriately. And all these things will kind of like mean that when, you know, I think there's a few weeks of like little tweaks to do to this, when this boat is finally ready for hole one to, to take delivery of or to be shipped, this will all be like running very, very sweetly. It's a very interesting insight into the process of taking a new boat and not just going, yeah, it's great, that works. It's about thrashing the tits off it and then working out what needs to be improved. So yeah, I'm, uh, no, stop rubbing your breasts. What's wrong with you? Honestly, I'm being trolled by this Shakespeare lookalike. Eh? So yeah, anyway, uh, that's us. Phil is cooking a lovely fry up. Uh, Richard is making his notes. Lucas is trying to do, look like he's doing some work, but he's actually just using the autopilot and I am apparently filming. Anyway, look, I hope you enjoyed this. I know that I and probably you lot have been looking forward to this test sale, and we will be doing a similar set of trials with Ruby Rose 2 when she's finally ready before she is either shipped or sailed somewhere. And as yet, we still don't know what that's going to be, but as soon as we do, we will let you all know. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. This is just us, me, the signing off from Lucas, Phil, and Richard. And um, I'll be back with you again next week, back in the factory, talking about developments on Ruby Rose 2 and what is next. So give us a like, give us a thumbs up. I will be back again soon. Bye-bye.